From Charlotte, North Carolina, it's Making Light of It with Darren Stock. Tonight's special guest, Troy Brewer. Featuring Steve Swanson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Darren Star. newest favorite show, it's Making Light of It. Yes, this is the show where we're endeavoring to release the joy of heaven into your world. It's such an honor to have you joining us. And I'm not alone, because I don't do anything alone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Steve Swanson. Hello, good friend. Hello, good friend. How you been? With you. Yes, it's been amazing. Oh, yes. It's never a dull moment when we're together. It, it's crazy, it's craziness. Crazy good. Here we go, in the news recently in Germany, a man was arrested for biting a police dog and after the man sobered up, he apologized to local police. A dude biting a police dog, I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? But <laughs> uh, hey, Steve, no. do you know what you call a pastor in Germany? No, what are they, what? A German Shepherd. Hey! <laughs> hey, oh! <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to polka dance. Oh. I was trying to polka dance, but I think it's just old man dancing here. All right, well, listen, in Florida, a woman sued Kraft for $5 million after claiming the Velveeta shells, cheese cups, take longer than three and a half minutes to prepare. When they told the woman that the process of suing Velveeta would take a long time, she responded by saying, I don't mind the wait. She might have actually won the case, too, if her husband hadn't taken the stand. And when he was asked, what happens when you plan a date with your wife and she tells you, I'll be ready in five minutes? <laughs> Her lawyer, when asked to prepare a three-minute closing statement, just stood there for 20 minutes. And then he said, how does that feel? <laughs> how does it feel? Tell me now. segment that we're really excited about and we're calling it the top five things that you don't want to hear after you're done preaching. <laughs> five things you don't want to hear after you preach. Very nice. Number five. Pastor, were you tired today? <laughs> don't want to hear that, trust me. Number four, don't worry, Pastor. There's always next week. Oh. Definitely, don't want to, definitely don't want to hear that. Oh. <laughs> Number three, maybe sometimes we should just end the service after worship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should just shut up. <laughs> Maybe you should pay your tithe. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you put a quarter in the offering basket last week. <laughs> Number two. Hey, Pastor. X, Y, Z. Uh-oh. <laughs> and number one. Pastor, you couldn't hear me snoring today, could you? Little, pa little pastor humor there, right? Like, <laughs> all right, listen, we've got a great show for you. Troy Brewer's in the house. Yeah. 
No joke, this show is about to get lit. Right here, right now. Let's make a lot of it, let's go. We are interrupting this holy and life-changing program to take a quick second to promote ourselves. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darren Stott. When I'm not casting demons out of hostile Antifa soldiers or being fried like a grilled cheese sandwich by extreme leftist reporters, I'm using my time to dismantle defeat and depression and catalyze joy in the hearts of believers. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and other socialist media apps at The Darren Stott. And get our free 45-minute teaching on portals at heavenlyportals.com. excited about our show today. Uh, my guest is a real life cowboy. And when he's not herding cattle or actually stealing my sermons, um, he is actually out there. It's true, it's true, we have evidence. He, he, he's rescuing children and uh, pastoring an amazing church called Open Door Church. All the way from Burleson, Texas, this is Pastor Troy Brewer, let's go. Welcome to my show. Welcome to my show. I'll shake your hand again. Yeah, I, no, honestly, I, I don't steal your sermons. You don't? You don't. I, I just steal certain phrases. Uh, oh, like, like what? Like what? I can't think of anything memorable or, <laughs> that you've ever said. It's, it's hallelujah. It's hallelujah. Yeah. That's exactly right. I've got you figured out. Do you know that you say you're excited about every single show? Really? Yeah. Are you really excited I, about I this am. show? I am. I really am excited about this show. You know, you, you know why? Why? Because we're going to play a game to get started. Really? You like, started? you like games. Sometimes. Right? <laughs> but we're going to play Two Truths and a Lie. You guys want to play Two Truths and a Lie with Pastor Troy? Come on, let's go. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a card, and I want you to write Two Truths and a Lie, and we're going to try to figure out which one is the lie. Is that good? Okay. All right, so go ahead and take, take your time. Got just been here write on this. Yeah, just write on this card. It's completely empty. There's no other writing on, on the card. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was quick. All right, you, 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 you can take, like that. You can take the card that? here. Yep. And um, what we'll have you do, hopefully you can read your own writing. Um, what, what, what we'll do is we'll have you go through each one, and then our audience will vote. Um, to see which one is the lie. Is that good? Okay, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, is it a truth or is it a lie? Let, let, let's go. What, what's number one? Number one is this. My first cousin was the Wookiee Chewbacca. Hmm. Okay. Number two. I led the Star Wars bar scene to Jesus Christ. I have been married four times this year. <laughs> okay, let's vote. Which one, which one do you think it is? One, your cousin's Chewbacca yeah. from Star Wars. Yep. Number two, yep. you led the saloon scene yep. from the, from the original, which is a bizarre scene. All these, you know, they're playing their, their flutes. Yeah. You led all those aliens to the Lord. Hammerhead. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and number three, you've been married four times. So actually, the first two are true. Actually, the first, the first two are true. I've been married 33 years, six to me, 34 years to Leanna Jane Brewer. Come on. Oh, come on. We love Leanna. She's so awesome. She's so cool. Hey, listen, I, I would love to hear this story about your cousin being Chewbacca and how you led the saloon bar scene from Star Wars, how you led those guys to Jesus. Well, I just, I had just had an opportunity to preach to him. And the reason I did was because Peter Mayhew, who played Chewbacca, married my cousin, okay? And, and her name's Angie. And so that meant that we got to go to some of the premieres of the movies. 
And um, uh, Peter Mayhew is an amazing person. I loved him. It shouldn't surprise anybody that I have a, you know, a Wookiee for a cousin, right? <laughs> it's not surprising at all. Yeah. And, and actually, our church fasted and prayed when he was not supposed to be in the script of uh, his comeback movie, which was, uh, what was it, Attack of the Clones. He wasn't in it. And we went on a 40-day fast and prayed that God would turn the heart of George Lucas to actually give him a, a place. So you called your church part. together and said, we got we something very serious that we need church, to pray about. We fasted and prayed that Chewbacca the Wookiee would be back in the story. Isn't that awesome? I, 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 I love it. Yes. So you guys... <laughs> So, all, so you guys did a 40-day fast and all night, all night prayer meeting. We had one person that fasted every single day of it. And, 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 and it worked. And it worked because the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And in this case, the king was George Lucas. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. That is so cool. So cool. All right. So then tell us about this, this whole thing. Okay. So uh, I get invited to, uh, it was just such a big deal to go to the movie. And we're at the movie. And it was my very first digital seminar I'd ever been in. I've never seen it. I was like, whoa. And it was like 16. I'm a country guy. And it was like 16 theaters there. So it's like, okay, the A-list, they're in, you know, one and two and three. I was literally in the 16th, <laughs> okay? Yep. So it was just a miracle that I got in, right? But I did, and I got in, it was just so cool. And I got to go to several of these, and it was amazing. And one time, me and Leanna are just sitting there, and we're minding our own business. And I'm like, so all these guys are talking, and they all have these real heavy Brit accents. And I love accents because I'm void of one, okay. I need one. <laughs> and so I'm like, man these, man, these guys are cool, man, listen to these cats. And, and these guys are talking, so I was like, so, what do, you, so uh, what do you guys do? And they're like, we don't do anything, we're actually not a part of this movie. And they're like, are you, are you in this? I said, no, I'm, I'm uh, Peter Mayhew's cousin. And they're like, oh, you know, we love Peter, right? And they're like, yeah, I do too, I love him too. I'm like, well, why don't y'all, why are you here if you're not a part of it? And they're like, well, because they've gone to this new digital format, they no longer use puppets and we're the puppeteers. Oh, wow. I'm like, the puppeteers? And they're like, yeah, basically we're the bar scene in Star Wars. And I'm like, what? I had actually been saying for years and years and years, I'm playing in a Christian rock band. It was one of my, it was part of my stick. You know, I'd say, man, I'm so on fire with Jesus. If I'd had anybody in the world to reach, I'd like to reach the bar scene in Star Wars. And I had been saying that for years and years. Yeah. And the, oh, there it is. Son. Son. And uh, honestly, I was like, I think the ground will open up and I will go straight to hell right this second if I do not share Jesus with these people. I had, I had said maybe in front of tens of thousands of people over a period of years, man, I would love to preach Jesus. Isn't that cool? And they said, that's who I am. So I looked up there, there was a countdown. Uh, there was only like two minutes. I was like, y'all gotta let me preach Jesus to you, please, please. And they're like, okay. And I was like, for God's love the world. I just went through all that stuff. And I said, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why you need him today. And they were like, brother. We're all <laughs> Isn't that cool? Isn't that yeah, awesome? I, I love that story. You, you were declaring for all these years, if I could preach to anyone, and then, and then God set it, set it right up for Yeah, you. he's like, here it is, big boy. Let's now, go. <laughs> Pastor Troy, I, I, I know your story. I, I just love your story. And, and just love seeing just the favor of God on your life and just the grace on you and your family to do really, really cool stuff in the kingdom. Um, and I, and w one of the things that I so appreciate about your story is that there have been plenty of opportunities when um, you could have turned your back on the church. You know, plenty, you've, you've seen the good, you've seen the bad, and you've seen the ugly. You know, and, and one of the things is that I know that there's people watching the show, you know, and maybe they're like, we're, we're done, man. We're, we're, just, we're, just, we're done with the church. We're done with organized religion. Mm -hmm. And maybe we, we got their attention through something silly that we were doing tonight. I'm not, I'm not sure. But man, there were opportunities when you could have got bitter, but instead you got better. And would you just speak into that? Well, you know, you're a pastor. You know, I don't know what congregation would have you, but you are a pastor. I'm a pastor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but what's real is, no, man, you know, I see this all the time. You know, Christianity is so much more than going to church. That's so true. And Christianity is more than how you're not committed to church. Wow. And I think that I learned a long, I'm like the most non-churchy guy in the whole world. And yet I pastor a really cool church. Um, I, I have been able to reconcile with the good and the bad and the ugly of it's because there's people that's in it. I mean, if I ran a Mexican restaurant, it would be, there would be people involved in it and there would be good, bad and ugly. And like, what is the mission and the mandate of the church and how can I, can, how can I remain passionate about that? 
I think just being in love with Jesus, I think being on the front lines, actually doing the kingdom stuff, um, being somebody that has to have encounters with the Lord. There's encounters that you can have by yourself and you must have those encounters, but there's encounters that happens with in the moves of God amongst God's people that doesn't happen when you're by yourself. Isn't that good? That's so good. Yeah. Come on. Now, one of the things I love about what you're saying is that um, even if people have, are taking a break from the traditional church attendance, mm -hmm. that they can actually still have a relationship with Jesus and that, that they shouldn't turn their back on Jesus, even though maybe they've turned their back on the church. Jesus still loves them and wants to en encounter them. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> yes, I must say. Is that what you're trying to say? I <laughs> <laughs> What I hear you saying. Oh, I was like, wow, I didn't realize I said that. But I'm saying it now. No, actually, no, no, I get it. And it's so true. I know that there's people that are watching that are like, hey, I'm done with the church thing. Well, I want to tell you, the Lord's not done with you being the church. Come on. And he's not done with your peace in the body of King Jesus. And he's not done with the mission and the goal that he has for you. And so what's real is everything in the kingdom is relational before it's functional. Wow. Do not bail on your relationship with King Jesus because something got messed up within the church. We're going to do a, a quick break. Don't go anywhere because we have more with <laughs> Pastor Troy Brewer when we come back. Did you know that a third of your life is going to be spent in bed? No, I'm not the My Pillow guy. I was discipled by him. It's me, the My Dreams guy, and the inventor of thedreamscourse.com. Do you feel tired and drained most of the time? Detached? Feeling alone in the world? Listen, I have created my very first dream school that will take you from being a victim of the night to being victorious! But wait, if you go to thedreamscourse.com and you use the code ISN30, that's a $300 value for not $99, not $89, not even $79. You will get lifetime access to your dream community and videos for only $69.99. Whoa! But you can't delay. You have to enroll today. TheDreamsCourse.com Wait, what you need is a Steve Swan suit. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I am. I am. <laughs> Because we're, we're cloning him. And for more information oh, on that, you can visit my website. So, yeah, you can get little Steve's and this, it gets weird. But, hey, listen, yeah. um, you are, um, believe it or not, Pastor Troy is actually quite talented. And you can, um, you can actually quote, I, I'm just trying to think of how many states there are, but there's actually 50 states in, in, in the United States, last I checked. Yes. Um, uh, and you can actually quote all 50 states in 20 seconds. I can't, I, I got this weird thing where I love uh, sequences. Okay. Okay, like, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genius, species of everything on the planet, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah you I can do that. I you can do that. Uh, but I, I actually love putting things in sequences and I love mapping things out. And so, yeah, I can, I can do uh, all 50 states in alphabetical order in 20 seconds or less. Would you be willing to do that? If there's money involved. On do you want some got money? money? Yeah. I got that. We're in. Checks in the mail. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're All right. I, I, okay, silver so and gold, I have me? none. So, really, are you really going to have me do this? Well, do you guys, you, you guys want to do this? Yeah. yeah. Wow. All 50 states. Okay. In 20, I don't even know if that's, I don't even know if that's possible. Oh, it is. Here, all right, I'm going to pull up a stopwatch. I'm going to time you. All right, now don't mess up my timing, though, okay? okay? Like, if you don't, don't go like three, two, one, or... You know, whatever. I want you to go. I'm going to show you because I, I want you to know that I'm. I not, want, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because I don't so trust I, you. I'm going to hit start as soon, okay. as, as soon as you start. All okay, right. Are you ready? We can do this. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. 19.33. Boom! 19.33 seconds. Can you believe that? Amazing. 
Now, that, that was really good. That was very impressive. What else you got? Well, un unfortunately, <laughs> you actually messed up. I did not. Yeah, no, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, because, and this is kind of funny, it, it, would, it would make sense, but you accidentally said Burleson, and Burleson is not a state. I didn't say Burleson. The, no, you did. I, I heard it, you. It's not Burleson, by the way. It's Burleson. But I Burleson, <laughs> I did not say, I did not say Burleson yeah. or Burleson. Well, did, did, we, did we record it? Did we record? I got it. You, you actually recorded it. Yeah. Uh, well, why, why don't you play it back? <laughs> Burleson. <laughs> you recorded it. <laughs> that play, was play. your stomach. But there was good you owe try. me money. It, it was a good try. It was a good try. You owe me money. <laughs> you owe me money, dude. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Listen, I, bro, you are creating something really, really cool out there in Texas, and um, you actually got a ranch. I do. And it's not just, it's not just an ordinary ranch. Um, this is a ranch, uh, this is a vision that God has given to you um, to help people. And um, you've called this thing Redemption Ranch. Would you be willing just to share with us your vision, your heart for Redemption Ranch and what you guys see Jesus doing here um, with this ranch? Well, uh, yeah, you know, we save boys and girls out of sexual trafficking and uh, we save about 3,000 girls a year. And we saved more than 10,000 over the past uh, seven, eight years. Hold on. You saved more than over 10,000 10, 10, kids, kids out of sexual slavery. Sure have. Yep. You have. Isn't that awesome? That is so awesome. Well, there is a lot of collateral damage that goes with, uh, you know, being a part of so many traumatized people's lives. And um, so it's just very important to have sacred spaces of redemption where people can come to and just be healed. And I'm all about that. I'm an, I'm an exhorter, I'm a fun guy, meaning I'm a mushroom. <laughs> I'm a fun guy, I like to have fun. Um, I like to not take myself very seriously because what we do is hard. You know, most people pastor a church and it kills them. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest thing I do. Wow. And I've been doing it for 27 years. The easiest thing I do is pastor Open Door Church. Wow. The things that we're involved in are very, very, very difficult. And so it's very important to have places where people can just have their lives poured in. So it's important for us to rescue kids. Yes, and we do. But it's, I, it is just as important to rescue the rescuers. So our first phase of this is to actually have our rescuers there to pour into the, we have, you know, Ugandan teams, Nepalese teams, Indian teams. We have uh, a huge work that we do in Mexico, a tremendous, we, a tremendous work that we do in all of the Central America countries. We have a food bank in Nicaragua that feeds 100,000 people a month. Wow. A month. Wow, wow, wow. Just a month. And again, we're not that big of a church. Um, we just have teams of doers, but doers need rest. And so Redemption Ranch, first and foremost, is a place where it's cool for them to be them, where they're celebrated, and where I have people from all over the world come around and pray for them and have words for them. The next phase of that is to actually have a bunch of our boys and girls there. Um, and we're going to have horse therapy on the ranch and do all kinds of fun stuff. We also have, and we actually have three of these set up for next year, special needs kids and their parents. And while we are taking care of all the kids and doing tons of fun stuff with their kids, just pouring into the parents and say, thank you for fighting this battle. Man, we're so proud of you. That's amazing. So that's pretty much what it's about. That is so cool. Redemption Ranch. Redemption Ranch. It is so awesome. Now listen, this last year, you guys have done something really, really cool um, in regards to what you're doing with media and keeping people up to date with these testimonies, these stories, mm -hmm. as well as just bringing, um, I, I know that you love the voice of God. In fact, you believe that God is speaking through all kinds of creative ways. Yeah, I do. And you're really big on equipping the saints for works of ministry. And so if people want to connect and stay up with what you're doing, hear the stories, but also be equipped to do the works of ministry, where can we go to follow what Jesus is doing to you? Yeah, thank you. Wow, man, you're being nice. Today. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you for that. I was worried. And the about answer you. is Darren Stott. <laughs> I knew right. he was going to yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for every. <laughs> Go to my website. I talk I'll, about him quite. I'll often. say. I, I, I'm, here's. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to speak, and then the editors are going to have something come over my mouth. It's going to say Darren Stott, and then it's going to say Burrison instead of me saying. <laughs> ODX.TV. So the Open Door Experience. And so ODX.TV. ODX.TV. That's man, it. That is so, so cool. And we're working on it. We're working on it, building a big old network there. Right. Stories Th of redemption. Thank you to you and Leanna for everything that you're doing from your food bank 
Every, every Saturday, you guys are out there yourselves feeding the hungry. You guys are clothing the naked. You guys are rescuing children. It's a big deal. I, I know the Father's so proud of you. I, I consider it such an honor uh, to call you uh, a friend and to include you in our first season of Making Light of It. Would you do me a big favor? Tell me. And would you bless our audience? And would you, I, I, I'm just believing that that same grace, that same peace that's on your life is going to go right through the camera and that people are going to find light in life um, as you pray. Okay. Well, friends, I want to just tell you, the Father's heart is towards you and He sees you. And it's a really big deal that you know and that you understand that you are seen. For those of you that are rescuers, for single mamas that are hammering it out and doing the thing, for for hardworking dads, for all the people that are just selflessly going after it every single day. Though the world does not celebrate you, heaven does. And he loves you so much. So I'm gonna pray for you. Father, Father God, sir, your word says, God, that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. And Father God, sir, I pray God for your sweet presence and for your anointing, Lord God Almighty, sir, to flow right through this into the lives of everybody that is watching this. Jesus, I love you and I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Troy Brewer. Come Thanks on, so buddy. much, man. Love you, man. I love you, man. Wow, you guys, Troy Brewer, he's special. My goodness. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Steve. What? This show, I think, was the most next level show we have ever done. Dude. What do you think? Next level. Next level, bro. Nexist level. Higher level, next level all the way. And as you can tell, we're just about out of time, but I don't want for you to be sad. Did you know that in the kingdom, there's no goodbyes? It's true. There's only highs and I'll see you soon. This has been an amazing show. I hope that you agree. Thank you for joining us. You mean so much to me. Fills my heart with joy to call you friend. It makes me so happy to know we'll be together again. And the kingdom, there's no goodbyes in the kingdom, there's only highs in the kingdom, there's no goodbyes in the kingdom, there's only highs the kingdom is no goodbyes here in the kingdom is only highs here in the kingdom is no goodbyes in the kingdom is only highs and I'll see you soon. Where's that portal? <laughs> there it is. See you soon.